Alright, this is my quick demo of the AC7 Core HD um, control surface application for um, iDevices and I think it's for Android. Um, not sure. But I just got it and installed on an iPad 2 running iOS 6.1. I'll be demoing some of its main features using uh, Sony Acid Pro 7 uh, as well as Adobe Audition. Right now I've got it set up and a project loaded for uh, Sony Acid Pro. Now there's a couple hoops you gotta jump through. I'm running a Windows 7 uh, professional. What you need to do is uh, you need to install a MIDI connector so that your iPad can communicate to your PC uh, and send and receive MIDI messages uh, through your um, Wi-Fi connection. So the application I'm using on Windows 7 is called RTP MIDI. Just go ahead and Google it. You download it from some site in the Netherlands. Um, but there's just read the manual and how to install it and configure it. I'm not going to go into it for this. This is just a demo, more of a functional demo, not a how to get it set up. Uh, for a Windows 7 and this uh, AC Core HD for iPad. Basically what I've done is I've established a session through Apple Bonjour, Bonjour and my iPad is connected and is receiving um, MIDI messages. So go back to Sony Acid Pro and <clears throat> The uh, AC7 uh, allows you to set up and connect uh, to different DAW uh, workstations. There's several of them available and functionally the layout um, pretty much stays the same. A few things change specific to the features available in each specific DAW. So there's Pro Tools, there's Logic, Digital Performer, Cubase, um, Cakewalk Sonar, uh, Reaper, Ableton, Reason, a Sony Vegas. Now, there's, there isn't a specific DAW setup for Acid Pro, so I'm using Sony Vegas. It's a Sony product. There's a few things in it um, that, uh, that'll work. Um, FL Studio, Fruity Loops, um, PreSonus Studio One, Adobe Audition, which I'm also using, Mackie Traction, a Final Cut Pro, and then there's kind of a generic setup. Um, basically, within Acid, uh, what I had to do was go into Preferences, uh, go into my MIDI setup, set the MIDI device as being my PC, that's the, the RTP MIDI, uh, then go into External Control and Automation and set up um, a new device. Basically, what this does is it emulates uh, Mackie Control Universal. So for those of you who are familiar with the Mackie controller or the MCU, this will uh, this basically emulates it. So within Sony at, uh, Acid Pro, I've gone ahead and set up the Mackie control uh, as my uh, external control um, as well. Um, I've gone ahead <clears throat> and uh, and set up uh, and enabled external control. So. Now, wirelessly, uh, I have basically transport and basic track controls, uh, as well as some advanced features, um, right into ACID Pro so that I don't have to use the mouse input. I'm free from using that for basic tracking, uh, as well as the iPad is a multi-touch uh, surface control. So, um, your faders, uh, are uh, able to be used like real faders. You can you can you can manipulate multiple faders at once, as many fingers as you can get on your faders. Uh, you can use those. Um, and if you can see here, uh, might be a little bit difficult with the view, but the you can see on screen the the faders are reacting uh, to uh, my the fader input that I'm that I'm doing on the control surface. So very very cool. <clears throat> in addition, um, AC7 has what they call uh, a V-pot uh, or a virtual pot. 
And what this allows you to do is, based on your pot assignment, uh, what you choose the behavior for those, you know, V pots to be, uh, their behavior will change. So I'm going to go ahead and set them uh, to control pan, channel pan uh, for uh, the selected tracks right here. Uh, okay, so uh, let's build a mix. Um, I'm going to basically build a mix from scratch uh, with the existing tracks and you'll see how we can use the AC7 as a uh, control surface wirelessly to the digital audio workstation I'm using Sony Acid Pro. So, let's start. Bring up the drums. Bring up my bass track. Rhythm guitar. It's a lead track. Bring the master volume down a little bit. Now at the top here, uh, you have the basic uh, channel input uh, controls that you would use most commonly. At the top there's uh, record ready or basically the track arm. You also have a solo button. You can solo up tracks. You can mute tracks, unmute tracks, again solo it. And then as I said before, you have a multi-touch availability on this surface. Also, uh, you have transport uh, functions available to you um, if you're looking at it in this view. Now, there are basically two areas of buttons for, um, for your workstation, but uh, you can scroll through these and have them set up uh, based on your workflow and what you're doing at that particular time. So, what you can do from the beginning here. Um, when you're in edit mode or you're looking at waveform or even when you're in track view um, you can choose zoom and if you can see here the zoom level of my view on the uh, computer monitor changes so that's zoom very handy to have next then you have the vpot assignments there's uh, for this particular control scheme there's uh, output input pan um, aux sends, uh, inserts, uh, and s other settings. From here, uh, markers. So if I had markers set up, I could jump to markers. It's more of a transport type function. Uh, I can change uh, views. Uh, uh, there's utilities here, file utilities, such as save, undo, um, cancel. Transport functions like marker, region, loop, mark in, mark out, uh, so that you can set up loop areas. You can set it up into loop mode. Return to zero. Um, your automation uh, and display uh, functions here. So you can set up, um, let's say, uh, zoom on the bottom one, and let's say some transport functions like return to zero at the top. Anyway, that's very, very handy. So, again, I should probably mention um, lag uh, or latency between the, the control input and the response of the uh, workstation. Uh, in the short amount of time that I've worked with it, it's been uh, pretty negligible. It's been it's been very responsive. Uh, if you go into your uh, RPT MIDI, you can see what your latency is. Um, right now, for some reason, it just it just jumped up. 
um, but normally it's you know something below 10 if you've got you know a strong connection to your through your Wi-Fi network um, so it works really well now as you're working with the fader or other dynamic controls such as the the shuttle uh, wheel which I'll show you in Adobe Audition how that works uh, I mean you can feel a little bit of lag it's not a physical fader so there's a little bit of little bit of lag but really n not much uh, certainly nothing that you can't get used to and it's not distracting at all okay so I'm gonna close down uh, Acid Pro and get into Adobe Audition. We'll load that up. In the meantime what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change my setup here and choose my uh, my DAW mode and I'm going to change that specifically to Adobe Audition mode which is already set up here so that's pretty cool. So let me go ahead and load a quick a project here get this set up and I'll show you how it works uh, with Adobe Audition the main functions uh, basically the same uh, because I switched from uh, Sony Vegas to Adobe Audition uh, within AC7 uh, some of my uh, button layouts are a little bit different um, the main groups are there but some of the button functions. Another thing I failed to mention is within most uh, workstations uh, for uh, external control uh, you can go in and set up uh, your and configure your external controllers uh, and, and, and do custom assignments so it's, it's highly configurable I just happen to be using the defaults uh, and I haven't gone in and customized um, the button functionality uh, here. So, anyway, let's uh, we'll go in here. We'll start this up. Now, this uh, I've got a backing track here of uh, free uh, all right now, uh, where uh, the guitar lead guitar has been taken out. I did the the um, lead guitar on here, uh, which is set up as uh, track two. Uh, and the backing track without the lead guitar is track one. Just a real simple two track, uh, just for demonstration purposes. Now, because uh, we're using Adobe Audition, and I'm not sure why this doesn't work in Sony Acid Pro, but the the shuttle the shuttle works. So I can I can basically scrub and jog. Through my uh, through my project here, and here's where the lead would come in. Now my track's down, so I'll just bring it up. Solo. So that's about it. Um, it doesn't have all the functionality that you're going to need to start a session uh, and record uh, and do all your editing. But uh, for an external surface based controller um, that really emulates the Mackie MCU, I'm, really, I'm super impressed so far uh, and I like it. Uh, and I'm going to continue to work with it. I switch back and forth between Adobe Audition and Acid uh, Pro. Um, 
just kind of based on how I'm feeling or um, what kind of tracks uh, I want to record. But I think it's going to work for uh, both of those workstations. And right now, it's I'm not being paid to say this, uh, it's probably my number one iPad app right now. And it's only $4.99 uh, US uh, in the... Uh, in the iTunes App Store, um, it, today's, uh, what is today, January something, oh, duh, it's February 6, 2013. Um, so, um, there it is. Uh, I may do a, a video on how to get all this synchronized. It took me about a half an hour, maybe 45 minutes to get everything uh, synced between the iPad app and my computer. So... Um, it might be helpful for others to uh, learn from uh, what I learned. So, okay, thanks for watching. Um, that's it. Bye.